Okay, so today we are going to build and review the new Oricon the Diviner Necrons miniature. However, unlike Imitech the Stormlord, this one didn't go quite as smooth. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, here we go, the new plastic Oricon model. So, I did record me unboxing this model, but the footage didn't come out very well. And to be fair, that's pretty boring. So instead, we're going to have a look at me cutting the pieces off of the sprue and removing the mold lines because, yeah, that's more exciting, Nick, right? Now, as I removed the mold lines from these pieces, I noticed that it actually had some ball joints on the arms, which is very different from Imitech. Imitech's build, you've got these neck pieces that go onto the arms and it's all sort of fixed into position. But Oricon definitely looks like you might be able to move the arms around, which I'm really liking. Now, when removing the mold lines, I came across a bit of an issue with my staff, in particular the orb at the bottom of the staff. The plastic was a different color. It was almost like it just, it wasn't set, the plastic. So I thought I would sort of scrape the plastic off to try and smooth it all out. And as I did, the plastic came away and actually I was left with a hole in my orb. And I thought, that sucks probably going to have to green stuff that. So with all the mold lines removed, I went to work on building this miniature and straight away I had an issue. On instruction one, you take the legs and you put a three piece tabard on one side and a one piece tabard on the other side. And my one piece tabard was missing. I couldn't find it anywhere. Now I knew that I'd removed all the pieces from the sprue before I binned it. I always check everything is removed. Uh, I thought maybe it would fallen on the floor. So I stopped recording and I spent 10 minutes looking everywhere for this piece. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have to just abandon the build, reorder another miniature and start again. And then I realized stupidly that the tabard which is featured in the actual instruction book is tilted to one side. It's actually the other three piece section on the other side and not a one piece section. The instruction book totally confused me, totally panicked me. I thought I'd lost a piece. That was not a good start. Now I did take some time trying to think about if I could leave some of the pieces off of the model for painting purposes because that cloak looks really difficult to get the paint brush in. I was thinking, can I keep the top torso off of the model, but it sort of glues to the cloak, so everything just has to glue together. I did decide to keep the front tabard off for gluing and also the head. However, I did have a slight issue trying to glue the body onto the legs. It sort of didn't really fit particularly well. Uh, There's no sort of ball joint or anything and I did struggle with that. I did manage to glue it into place in the end, but yeah, not an amazing build. I glued the towel together, but I thought I would leave the back section off again, just to make it easier to paint the cloak. I also left both arms off again, because they've got that ball socket, it means I can sort of glue them in at a later date, just leave them off easier for painting. Okay, so with everything built that I was going to build, I then went back to the staff. Now, like I said, I originally thought maybe I would green stuff in the hole, and I could have done that. However, this is a perfect sphere, and it's gonna be really difficult to green stuff that hole in and actually make it look any good. So, came up with another idea. Over the years, I've been collecting little balls, little ball bearings, some metal, some plastic, and I thought maybe I could cut out the faulty orb and replace it with one of these ball bearings. And I had a perfectly sized plastic ball bearing that I thought I could use. So I went about cutting out the old orb. I used my usual blue tack trick. And to get to the plastic in the center of the hole, I used a drill piece and just gently drilled out that. And then I just glued the orb into place uh, using super glue. 
Now, let's have a quick look at the stats for Oricon. It's fair to say there's been no change except that he can no longer lead Lich Guard, which is very disappointing. So he can only lead Immortals and Warriors. Now, of course, one of his big pluses was the fact that he gave the units a 4-plus invulnerable save. Still pretty useful on Warriors, but of course, reanimation for Warriors is just not as good in the Codex. However, potentially on Immortals, that could be useful. The trouble with Immortals, though, is it is only one unit of 10, and that unit can be wiped out in one turn very easily. So is it worth putting Oricon, which stayed the same in points, 80 points, into a unit of Immortals? I'm not really sure. Of course, he still has the Stars Are Right ability, so once per turn he gets empowered and he gets beefed up in his stats. I've heard some people say that they're going to use the old miniature for when he's not empowered and the new miniature for when he is empowered, which is a pretty cool idea. And when the miniature is actually completed with my little orb in there, he looks pretty cool. And to be fair, he's pretty big as well. A very nice looking, imposing character. I'm really liking Oricon. The new model from Finecast, of course, is a must because we're getting rid of all of Finecast. I refuse to buy it anyway. Uh, however, I don't have an old Oricon miniature to show you or to compare you with. I've only got my converted one, which I did convert from the old Finecast Cryptic that we had. There they are together. I think the height of my old Oricon is probably about right, but I'm not 100% sure on that because I've never owned the old model. But the new model does look super cool. I'm really happy with my solution to my dodgy orb. I hope that that was just a one-off and not all of the miniatures have that dodgy orb. I did consider taking the miniature back to Games Workshop, but it meant I couldn't get this video done. So there we go. Now, if you want to see my Imitate the Stormlord video, then here it is for you. And if you want to see my first look at the Codex video, then there it is for you as well. Uh -huh.